I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're diving into the tangled web of emotion, trail, and mystery in Charles Frierson's amazing book. It is called My Name is Nobody. This gripping tale takes us through the complexities of love, revenge, and the shadowy consequences of desire. Get ready for a deep dive into a world where every secret has a price and every twist leads to a shocking consequence and revelation. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. Charles, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thanks for being our guest. Great. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. This is quite a tale. It's a multi-layered narrative. Sure. What's the inspiration behind My Name is Nobody? Well, you know, some of the incidents actually in the book are, are some things that I, I kind of might have lived myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I've been living through this character vicariously for years and years and years. And I decided, and, I, and I, for years I've been telling my mother I was going to write a book. And she passed in 2016. And between work and, and grandkids and kids, it was a little difficult to sit down and start doing it. But, you know, I finally found the time and I woke up one morning and I said, I'm going to write this book. And right. that's what I did. So that, that's where I'm at right now. Wonderful. Let's give the folks at home an overview of what the book is about. It's about it's about a character that just served in some military time that did some special ops. Um, and, you know, he retired after after so many years in the military. And he went into a whole, totally new life mm -hmm. um, and kind of kind of went under the radar. That's when he became the nobody because he didn't want to be, you know, bothered by the CIA or anybody of that nature. Then somebody, someone from his past just happened to pop in and remember something that he did while he was in the military. So he kind of got entangled with this character and this character did some things to, to bring back out that person that he really didn't want anyone to see like, ever again. So that's pretty much how, how I came up with the idea. And part of the book deals with the darker aspects of human nature, such as infidelity and murder. Tell us a little bit about that part of the plot, that part of the The story. infidelity part on JP was, you know, good looking guy, you know, very handsome guy, very well built guy, and just 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 loved women. I mean, nothing mm -hmm. he could really do about it. Got married a couple of times, got divorced, had a couple of kids. Um, he just loved women. I mean, he loved beautiful women. And that, that's pretty much what his kryptonite was beautiful women. So, exactly, exactly. Um, the concept of brotherhood influences the characters' decisions in the book. Tell us a little bit about that part of the book. Well, it, it was, during the military time, he, he joined a, a group called the Masons and he became a master of Masons. And these brothers that was in his uh, platoon or his unit while he was in the service also followed him out into the civilian world. So basically, you know, in the back of his mind, he, he knew something what maybe eventually would always pop up. He wasn't sure when. So he kind of kept these guys that he was in service with around him at all times. So pretty Absolutely. interesting. Absolutely. Have you envisioned this as a uh, movie or a TV series, perhaps? I mean, it would be fantastic. And, and yes, I, I have envisioned it, but, you know, that's... If, if it happens, it, it'd be great. I didn't really write the book to become rich. You know, I wrote the book because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 59 years old. And, you know, I played a little bit of sports when I was in high school, but I didn't go to be 6'8", and I didn't go to be, you know, uh, uh, Michael Jordan or um, uh, uh, Aaron Judge or any of those guys. So I, I wanted to leave a legacy for, for my kids, my grandkids, and hopefully my great-grandkids. So when I'm not here, they can say, well, the grandfather did write a couple of uh, books. And this is what it's about. So very cool. Very cool. And the work is out there now. So you never know who will uh, pick it up, decide to make it into a film. That's the wonder of putting something in, on paper is that it can wind up in anybody's hands like a message. That would be fantastic. That, that would be great if that, if that could happen. It would be fantastic. Exactly. You know, I, you know, back to the sports thing, I, you know, I was actually a pretty good athlete, but. You know, we when I was a kid, we moved from uh, the Bronx, New York, to a small town here in Florida called Lima, Florida. And there was really no scouts of that nature back then. Um, I was actually a pretty decent athlete. At, at least I think I was. I'm, I'm going right. to myself a little bit here. You know, with that being said, you know, I'll, I'm going to put a challenge out there to someone that you guys might be familiar with. And his name is Stephen A. Smith. And I like to challenge him to a, a three-point uh, NBA basketball shootout one day. 
Anytime soon. There we go. There oh, we I'd go. love to see that. That'd be great. Yes, sir. That'd yes, be sir. great for sure. Um, what was it like writing the book? Tell us what the process was like for you. Um, I drive to work. It's about 50, 51 minutes to get from door to door. Mm-hmm. And what I would do is if I thought of something, I would turn my music off and I would speak, speak it into the phone. And then I would get home and then I would jot it down and try to put it all together. It actually, uh, I think for about three months, I think the ending of the book is what took me the longest mm-hmm. to come up with a, a, a real good ending because the book's 100 pages. And the idea was to give um, you guys a taste of what this guy, JP character, what is going to become because I'm not done with them yet. So I wanted to see how that would do as well. But the ending of the book was the hardest part of the, of, of the book. Um, so I would, I would talk into my phone and, and leave, you know, like th- things that I thought would fall into character to the character. So it took me about two years to put it together, actually. So very cool. Very cool. Are you thinking about a sequel? Yes. I already have it in mind. Tell us a little bit about that. Where does the story go? <sighs> I'm not sure if I want to give that one away right now, but okay. it, it, it's, it's, uh, J- the return of JP. The name of the book is, is going to be Jennifer. And in order for you to understand the title of the next book, you have to read the book to understand why I'm naming the next book Jennifer. Um, she's actually a character in the book. And if you read it, you'll understand why I'm naming it Jennifer. So it go, it's going to go into um, more of a more violent, serious, Jack Reacher, uh, John Wick type character. That, that's what he's going to become. That, that's what the start of the book was to be, to think about John Wick. To make John Wick and Jack Reacher look like choir boys, hopefully. We'll see. Sounds great. That's quite a description. That'd be wonderful. Now, My Name is Nobody. Who would you have star in this film if it were to be made a movie? Wow. That's a tough question. Um, I, I thought about Lorenz Tate. I mean, because he, he's about the, the size of the guy. Mm-hmm. That, that um, um, character, he's about that size. I thought about, I can't remember the kid's name. Um, I can't remember his cat's name. I can't remember his actor's name right now. But Lorenz Tate is one of the characters. And then, of course, you know, the other characters, it'd be somebody like uh, um, John Cena would be like one of the bodyguards or one of his one of his angels that's in the book. Um, it, 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 it'd be a tough pick to to find all of the characters fall into place. I do have somebody in mind for, for the character Jennifer, but that's probably a little of a reach. But, you know, you never know. I, I was thinking Jennifer Lopez because Jennifer Lopez would, would fit the character perfectly for the next book. Cool. That'd be great. You never know. She makes a lot of films. Maybe Netflix will be, it'll be her next Netflix film. You never know. That would be fantastic if that could happen. That'd be wonderful. That'd be not, great. Not, without, not what I was expecting, but if it happens, it happens. If it does not. Yeah, exactly. You can't expect like, anything in sure. Hollywood. You never know sure. how things are going to go. Um, were, did you also serve in the military? I did. I did. I did a, a little bit, of, a little stint for a couple of years in the military. Uh, back in '83, got out of '92. So you know, I did a few little tours here and there. So where, where, where did you tour? Where were you stationed? I, I, I was in Turkey for a year. I was stationed in uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Did a little, tur- a little tour in Italy, and also did uh, my end tour in uh, Fort Hood, Texas. Okay, those aren't bad places to be, Turkey and Italy. Uh, that sounds great. Not too bad, yes. You lucked out, particularly in that era. You could have been in a lot worse places, that's for sure. That's a fact. That's 100% yeah. fact. So, yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually, I got I'm medically discharged in 92 for a, a, a Humvee accident I got in. So I'm actually a disabled vet. And I'm also a master mason. Um, so like I said, you, you know. You borrowed a little bit of this, borrowed a little bit of that from your own life, exaggerated here as need be, expounded upon different things and created a character. I exaggerated a lot, not just a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it, yeah. It, well, it, I, I, I think it's a very good book. Um, you know, I wrote it. I want people to, to give me their opinions and be honest. And yeah. if wherever they buy the book, whether it's Barnes and Noble or Amazon, put in a, put in your, your your review and let me know what you think. So that 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 me lets me know what I need to put into the next book. So. Exactly. Have you shared the book with any family members or friends? Have you gotten any feedback from them? My oldest brother is probably my biggest critic, and and he said something to me. And he asked me to call him, and I'm kind of evading that call because he's going to be brutal. But he's honest, you know, so he's, he's well, honest. Um, if he's honest, I don't think he'll be brutal. I think he'll have a lot of praise for you because it's a terrific book. The name of the book is? The name 
is nobody. It is a gripping tale that takes us through the complexities of love, revenge, and the shadowy consequences of desire. It is a dive into a world where every secret has a price and every twist leads to a shocking revelation. It's a wonderful book. As Charles says, it's kind of like Jack Reacher on steroids. You'll really, really enjoy it. That's for sure. Charles, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Logan. Thank you very much. I appreciate much. your time. Wonderful having you on the show. To the oh. folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight. <laughs>